How did Isaiah say that the Lord would deliver Judah from the Assyrians? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 2 Kings on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. And it was so and so it was when King Hezekiah heard it that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy, for the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be the Lord your God will hear all the words of the Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God, and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Blasphemed me. Surely... I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Over these last three lessons, we have been looking at the reign of Hezekiah. He came to the throne as a co-regent during the latter years of the reign of his wicked father Ahaz, but before the fall of Samaria at the hands of Shalmaneser. Hezekiah was a righteous king. In fact, since the reign of David, there had not been a king in Judah like him, for he walked completely in the ways of David, not only by being righteous himself, but by bringing the people along with him, by destroying their high places. Time, though, has passed, and Assyria has a new king, Sennacherib. It is during the reign of Sennacherib that Hezekiah decides to rebel against Assyria, for he was largely a vassal of Assyria, praying, paying tribute to it since the days of Tiglath-Pileser. In 701 BC, Assyria came down to quell the rebellion and succeeded due to the weakness of Hezekiah in not trusting in God for deliverance, choosing instead to pay Assyria off. About three years later, Hezekiah tried casting off the shekels of Assyria, of Assyria again, and so again Sennacherib came down to try and quell this rebellion. Before coming to Jerusalem, the Assyrians once again had to deal with Lachish, and so Sennacherib sent the Rabshakeh to Jerusalem to warn Hezekiah of what was to come and to try to convince the people of Jerusalem to surrender. The Rabshakeh mocks Hezekiah and his army, and blasphemes God in the process, saying that nothing would be able to stop the advance of the Assyrian army upon Jerusalem, and also implying that Assyria couldn't be bought off this time. Jerusalem was going to fall, and Hezekiah was going to die. This is the message that Hezekiah's messengers bring back to him in chapter 19. And naturally, Hezekiah is distressed at such a message, so much so that he tore his clothes, covered himself, and went into the house of the Lord. Now, why would Hezekiah, a man of faith, not simply have confidence that the Lord would deliver him? Well, it is a fairly common human weakness that when faced with insurmountable odds of success, we tend to lack a faith that God will see us through. It's not that we doubt God is able to do so, it's that we sometimes doubt that God will do so. Hezekiah certainly didn't doubt God's existence or his ability. But just three years prior, Hezekiah had doubted God, which is why he submitted to Assyria. This time, though, such an action would not work. Would God protect Judah, or would he allow Assyria to win? And so, instead of simply standing idly by and hoping that God would protect them, Hezekiah went into the house of the Lord in humility, in order to plead for God's assistance. He even sent Eliakim, the man over his household, and Shebna the scribe, along with the elders of the priests, those be elderly men who had held the priestly office, to Isaiah the prophet, in order that Isaiah might plead with the Lord on Judah's behalf, for Judah was, like, it was in a situation like a woman about to give birth, but having no strength to do so. 
This Isaiah is the same man who wrote the book of Isaiah. And in fact, this entire ordeal is recorded in his book, almost verbatim to what we read here. And since it is likely that at least this part of 2 Kings was written after the book of Isaiah, this shows us that the, the divine inspiration by the Holy Spirit led the author of 2 Kings to use this section of Isaiah for the source material of this section of 2 Kings. And so, what, was I, what were Isaiah's words to these men? Do not be afraid of the words that they had heard that blaspheme the name of God. For God would send a spirit upon Sennacherib, and he would hear a rumor that would cause him to return to his own land, and there he would fall by the sword. In other words, the Lord would deliver Hezekiah from the hands of Sennacherib. And not only that, but for his blasphemy, God would punish Sennacherib with death. And later on in this chapter, we're going to see exactly that. But before we do so, we need to see what is going on in the Assyrian camp upon the Repshaka's return to Lachish something we will see, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 8 to 19, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out the whole world.